Support the channel on patreon.com slash manlightfoot. Welcome to another episode of Simple Thoughts. In today's episode, I'm going to be talking Bob's Burgers because it's just a genuinely great series that I have found myself just loving throughout the years and to this day I still watch it even though it premiered like so long ago. I was there when it first premiered and to this day I watch every new episode that comes out and I can honestly say it's never really had like a bad episode. It has few certain types of episodes I'm not the biggest fan of but they're not bad. They're still good and they entertain in some way in their own right. But, you know, it's still a great series, and I honestly can't say they, they've never really missed with me. Before we get into things, this video is sponsored by Atlas VPN. With the Belcher kids being as rambunctious as they are, they probably don't have the best knowledge when it comes to staying safe online. Certainly not Gene, anyway. Luckily for people like you, you can avoid the online dangers with Atlas VPN. Atlas has the means to block all sorts of nasty malware and ads from attacking your computer and block any other malicious actors from finding out where you are. It can block all sorts of trackers that scour their internet so you can browse and shop online without your data being tracked. Right now there's a big deal going on because Atlas VPN Premium is just $183 per month plus 3 months extra and with a 30 day money back guarantee. Protect your privacy and get many benefits of Atlas VPN for the ridiculously low price. You can take this deal by clicking the link in the video description below. Be quick as it's a limited time offer. I've been hacked before and that was a pretty scary time for me that I don't wish on anyone else. But with Atlas, I don't have to worry about anyone getting their hands on my information ever again. There's so much Atlas VPN can do for your online safety, so don't miss out on such a great deal. It's not just the thought that you should go to the link and get in on this three month subscription deal. Thank you to Atlas VPN for sponsoring this video. Now, let's get back into it. I mainly want to talk about this one particular episode that came out a while back. I think it's a season nine episode, Tween Entrepreneurs. It's an episode that I think touches upon something that you wouldn't expect to be touched upon in Bob's Burgers, honestly. And it's sort of a anti-capitalist episode. <laughs> bear with me, bear with me, okay? It's an interesting episode because it kind of does show the dangers of how capitalism can get out of hand in a sense. It doesn't go deep into it. It's very allegorical in a sense, but they still sort of touch upon this. And of course, you could argue it's sort of uh, the viewer's interpretation to a degree. Like even in this sense, it's kind of my interpretation, but I feel like it's still merits some type of examination on this front so with this episode they mainly tackle capitalism in the sense of the kids they're a part of this club that basically is all about creating a business you know showcasing what goes on with making a business and such you would think of course with the belcher kids and their dad running a business <laughs> they'd have some level of business savvy but it kind of goes wrong a little bit mainly on Tina's part but we'll get to that it mainly has to do with them in this club and they create a business and they now have to run it like any other business and make sure it actually profits and everything so with this episode what we get is basically Gene Tina and Louise are partnered up with Jimmy Jr Rudy Jocelyn and I blank on the one girl's name with the fish lips. <laughs> hmm. Oh no. And also Zeke. But they have to team up and make a business. And they go through all these different names and ideas uh, until they come upon the one that they're going to make based off this thing that Jimmy Jr. made. It's called what he calls a woodchuck. It's basically Plank from Ed and Eddie. <laughs> it, it's just Plank, basically. It, but with googly eyes instead of just having a full-on drawn-on face and so they make bu a business just making these little things and selling them and people clearly want it because it's like oh it's like a nifty little thing like you could just have and so basically they make this business and everything's doing well it's popping and everything but things kind of start to turn for the worse in a sense at how everything goes basically Jean, Louise, Tina, and Rudy are left to now have to make woodchucks. They're the only group that makes it. They're the workers. And Jocelyn, 
Jimmy Jr. and Zeke and the fish lip girl who's name escapes me for some reason Tammy 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 her name is Tammy okay yeah Tammy they're basically in charge of everything they're you know the president the CEOs and such the executives they sort of do some work with like being out there and selling it you know like at the stand but you know you're sitting on your ass all day while the table has the woodchucks and people just come in give money and that's it it's like okay that's not to knock cashiers or anything like that <laughs> like but you know cashiers do way more than they would be doing in this instance they're just sitting at a table and the woodchucks are on the table people pick them up give cash and that's it that's really about as far as it usually go as it goes with that basically they are <laughs> taking advantage of this factoid by buying snacks for themselves and not for the workers the workers don't really get anything even though there is basically a wage going on they aren't paying the workers, which is pretty disgusting. And it's also kind of messed up that Jimmy Jr., who came up with the idea, isn't the one making them or is on the floor, like making them with like the Belcher kids and such. So that's the one thing that's like, hmm, that's a little weird. Yeah, you created it, but you created it. You should be helping and making it because you're the one who created it. You know, they just appointed him president because he made it instead of like, Oh, you're, you created it, but you also got to help make it because, I don't know, it's just that weird thing. But things, you know, get heated more and more as the workers' conditions are not being well kept. You know, they're dealing with a lot of sawdust and paint fumes or wood stain fumes. And it's just unhealthy conditions to be working in. And they don't even have proper ventilation. You know, they don't even open a window to <laughs> let out some of the fumes. It is really bad because you have somebody like Rudy who has asthma. Like, that's really not good for him. So, you know, Tina takes it upon herself as like, oh, I'm the leader of the workers, so I'll go talk to the upper management and such. And she goes to do this, but they do something kind of messed up. They basically make it so it's like, oh, we'll appoint you to a higher position, a relations management, basically. And she's basically in charge of the workers entirely. She doesn't have to work anymore either now. And it's pretty gross. And <laughs> how she basically just sells out her own like family. <laughs> when it's like you were down there with them, and it just kind of shows that it's like, yeah, if the money is <laughs> looking real green, it could turn people bad. Some serious, you know, like she willingly sold out her own fa her own family, even though she was supposed to, you know, get them better conditions. They weren't even fighting for like wages; they just wanted better working conditions. That's all they wanted. And so she just sells them out. And in doing so, she basically, it results in everybody just half-assing it because she ends up, along with Tammy and them, coming up with the idea of, oh, let's increase productivity because the demand for these things is so high and they increase productivity, but at the cost of how much, how much time can be used to make it. They, before it was like 20 minutes to make these things. Now they're cutting it down to like five minutes to make it. And so, you know, Louise and Jean and them decide, okay, we're just gonna half-ass it, or quarter-ass it, as they say, because apparently half-ass is too much ass, so, okay? Because, yeah, let's face it, it's a company. I mean, it's a fake company, but it's a company of some sort. And it's like, you're replaceable, so you might as well not hurt yourself just trying to make this thing the best it can be when it's like, well, they replace you in an instant if anything were to happen to you, so why waste the time? or why waste the effort you know and so because of their half-assedness it results in basically the products being crappy and just effective and also splintery because before they were smoothing down the sand so it wouldn't give you a splinter but now they're just not doing that and people are like i don't want to buy this so profits are down the upper echelon the executives basically are telling them hey start working harder or such and they're like well, you're not meeting better, giving us better conditions to work with. So, and you guys keep spending all the money on like snacks and such while they get nothing. So they just go on strike. Louise, Jean, and Rudy, they go on strike. And now at this point, it's like, what do we do? We literally screwed ourselves over now. So we got to make profits somehow. And then it gets into even worse territory where basically they decide, oh, let's, you know, make a cheaper crappier product like they call the woodchuck 2 is just like 
it's just not going to meet standards, you know? Like, most people wanted the regular woodchuck. But it's like this tiny little thing where it's like, it has the googly eyes, and it's just smaller, but not properly sanded or anything. It still could give you a splinter. But they try to... It's basically like the Coke 2. It's just Coke 2, but this little woodchuck thing. It's like, okay. And as we all know, that didn't turn out well. And as we see in the episode, it doesn't turn out well. You know, everything's going bad. They eventually are about to go bankrupt because they basically did a deal with um, the little craft store. And they bought too much supply. And it's like, ooh, y'all ain't going to be able to make back that money because nobody wants these inferior products now. And eventually, just to make a long story short, they make up and they finally, you know, come up with a better business plan of just selling googly eyes so they can at least pay off the loan that they took out or pay back the money that they owe. They break even by the end and they realize it's like, yeah, running a business, you got to be better at it than just doing cheap tricks and all that. Like, it's a business. Plain and simple, you can't just get by on skeeviness. It's, it doesn't, it steals your soul, basically. Like, they were even trying to pawn off the business, like, declare, sort of, declare bankruptcy, in a sense. Or, more or less, it's like, it, this is, it's like, sell the business off to some sucker who can try to just take off the problems, take away the problems for us, basically. And in doing, it, it, it wouldn't have felt right, because they were planning to do it to Teddy, and it's like, it's Teddy, he's a very gullible idiot. But it's a good episode that really touches upon how capitalism can really suck the soul out of people and it usually it ends up pretty bad but i would also argue this episode showcases a little bit how socialism could be a better model and and i really find that part the most fascinating honestly You're fine. Why is that woodchuck saying I'm fine? So with this episode, it does tackle capitalism in a very anti sense. And I think it does it in a really good manner of it does dumb it down a little bit, even though it's an adult series. But it does showcase it in a simplified way that I think many people would get the message from it. You know, because in this episode, you see what happens is that they create like these cubicles. They create separate sections of their workplace where it's like the executives are on one side and the workers are on this other side far away from them. And so in doing that, it's creating a sense of hierarchies. And the problem with capitalism is the idea of uh, hierarchies. You don't want people feeling like they're superior because you're all making the same thing and selling the same thing. No one should be feeling like they're better than anyone. A CEO is not better than the grunt worker or is, or more or less the CEO is not better than like the mail delivery person or anything like that or the janitor even. Like you're all here to make sure this product sells, to make sure this business thrives. So sh you should all be working at the same degree. And it just made no sense how they were basically separating everybody and the people at the top get these snacks, get a soda machine, and get all these benefits, whereas the workers are just stuck huffing paint fumes and sawdust, you know? Like, they're going through these terrible conditions, and it's not healthy. And from what we saw is they went on strike, you know? Louise, Jean, and Rudy, they go on strike, and it's like, all well, the business had to stop. And that's sort of a thing that we're seeing now in today's times with more unions deciding we're going on strike. Screw it. You guys are taking too much of the money. The greed is getting to y'all. And because of this, it's just showcasing why 
it, this capitalist system can't really function well because what we saw with this business that they were running they decided to go with cheap tactics to try to maximize profits when the original model was working just fine really like yes some people were a little bit complaining about how oh well i want one but you you, you keep running out so fast it's like tough titties <laughs> you know it's like oh well like sorry you gotta wait <laughs> like yeah the demand is high but you'd rather it be a good product versus a rush product where it's like yeah it barely works or it's crappy or it hurts you you know and but they were like no we need to make sure we get these out fast so we can get more money fast and it's like mm. and what really makes it clear is because the resolution that they came to was everybody needs to work together to make sure this uh, product works right you know that's what came out of everybody on this front and that really speaks to why i say this kind of pro-socialism because of the fact that it makes it clear everybody needs to be on equal footing doing the same amount of work you know everybody should have a say because that's how a good business can work a lot better where everybody's happy when it's like everybody's treated as an equal you know everybody has a say in where this company can go you know because that's I think way more beneficial than just you have somebody at the top making all the decisions but they're not in you're not they're not in the trenches you know they're not actually making these things to see exactly why you can't do certain things like if Tina stayed in the trenches if like Jimmy Jr. and Zeke and Jocelyn and Tammy were in the trenches making this stuff they realize oh that's why we can't rush this like otherwise if we rush it we're just gonna hurt ourselves and it's not fun and then they probably would have realized yeah we probably should give them masks and you know ventilate this whole system too because it's not healthy be sucking in stain wood stain fumes and sawdust like it's just messed up and it's really bad for rudy who straight up has an actual disability like that's really not good for him like if he wanted to he probably could have sued of course now he was a kid he, he wasn't about to do that but still they shouldn't have put him through such terrible conditions but that's how i think this episode is really unique for that because it was willing to actually touch upon this stuff by the fact that it's like yeah people get to a point of half-assing their work even because it's like i mean yeah why do i need to put all this into this company that's not gonna give me much i mean sure they sort of pay me granted this since they weren't getting paid but it still is important to treat your workers right because otherwise you lose the workers you lose the product the business dies because it's like yeah if they're gonna spread the word that's like this place sucks to work at and you're not gonna get paid well so don't work here <laughs> and so the business go goes under and they saw the big risk with doing that. And that's one of those things that I find fascinating that this episode was willing to touch upon this and simplified it enough that people could get the message. It doesn't get into the deeper problems of capitalism. It just touch upon like sort of surface level stuff, like with the fact that the 1% is very greedy and trying to get as much out of the profits as they can while not compensating the workers properly, you know? Because let's face it, if you made it so it's like the workers are compensated, right? Like you, your business probably would be doing just fine and be thriving just fine. But the problem is always growth and trying to make it bigger than what it is. And it's like you don't got to be bigger than what you are. It's okay to just be at one level and stick to that level and just sustain, you know? But yeah it's a great episode and i think it touched upon the the whole reason why people are striking nowadays it i think it's an episode to look back on and think yeah they kind of got it <laughs> they understood a lot of people's problems like bad working conditions very unfair wages people at the top making all these big demands and not recognizing it's like you don't have the manpower to make this stuff you don't compensate the workers properly and it gets into this stuff really well. And I think that's just something to really appreciate about Bob's Burgers. That even though it's a very small and simple show, it can get into the weeds just like the best of them can as well. And teach a really good lesson that I think many people are going to be able to resonate with. But that's just a thought. <laughs>